undefeated. She picks up her first Masters 1000 title. Danielle, you're you're grinning ear to ear, and you deserve every ounce of it. Oh. The 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 initial emotions when you when you sunk into your knees there. Oh, interestingly enough, a lot of like Floridians as kids get to come here, but I didn't because my dad was like, if. You, you're only going if you play the tournament. So I had to work really hard to get here. <laughs> it is not easy getting to the professionals. So um, yeah, it's been a really memorable experience every time I've come here, but nothing compares to this. And to have had so many family members and friends here supporting me and pushing me this week, um, the last two weeks has just been incredible. I can't tell you how many friends came in and flew in for this match today um, and people that I've been in my corner for a long time that come, came to the match to surprise me. It's going to be a fun weekend. We are <laughs> off to a good start this weekend. I feel like a weekend warrior. So we're doing a pickleball tournament tomorrow. Celebratory pickleball tournament. Celebratory pickleball yeah, tournament. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of our celebrations. And then it's, you know, it's Miami. So you'll see us out on the town. It'll be, a, it'll be a big night. And um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of, a lot of emotions out there. I mean, to have won this, uh, tournament my home state and feel and the feeling that I had of like playing in front of thousands of my best friends yeah. everywhere I looked like people were supporting me cheering me on I there's a woman by my towel box that was encouraging me and pumping me up and in another corner there were other family that was giving me words of encouragement and support I've never experienced anything like it and um it is just really special being here in my home state and to have won my first a thousand here. The atmosphere was just palpable out there. Yeah. You could feel everyone pulling for you so hard. Um, th th there are so many uh, things that I want to ask you, but first we have to get into the tennis because yeah. you played exceptional. You you didn't try to let Elena Robakina get started. She's so offensive. Was it really about just getting the first strike in today? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Elena's got a really big game, and I think it was all about serving and returning. Um, those first those first shots are the most important um, in any match, but especially when you're playing against a big server and someone with great returns. Yeah. So I had to be really on it, and, and it required an amount of concentration that I have not been pushed to at this level, this tournament. And um, Elena was hitting some incredible shots. She was backing me up. I had to do a good job of absorbing, um, getting down low, moving to the ball, and also trying to get a read on the serve as much as I could, but it's tricky. I mean, she's number three in the world, Wimbledon champion. She's got a lot of accomplishments, and there's a reason for that. She uh, is not an easy person to read with her shots, and it's hard to anticipate where she's going to go. You were so clutch on break points today. You saved 10 out of 11 break points. She had a lot of opportunities. What? What was going through your head because you were so good in executing in those moments? I mean, it's really tough. Elena's not an easy person to break. Uh, those are some big serves coming in. She <laughs> is a monster out there. And it's like that for everybody. And I had to be really patient with myself. I had to give myself targets. I had to have a plan every time I walked up to that baseline. I can definitely say I, I showed up every single point. Even, even the ones that she painted the lines and was going for it, I was really thinking about a lot tactically and technically and um, it forced me to return at a high level and I think that's why I returned so well. We got to talk a little bit about that last game. That yeah. was such a long last game. You saved some break points, but you seem like you just were able to keep the nerves at bay. What was the, what was the heart rate like, D? Oh, was like blood <laughs> pressure is a little high. Yeah, I was like, you know, uh, getting old, Danielle. Like, I uh, got to keep that blood pressure in check. Um, it was really nice that I was on the side of my box. Um, I don't think I've ever gone to my box so much and have asked for advice. And having like Jimmy Arias there, like number two in the world, um, someone that I've known for a long time and has helped me a lot at IMG um, to give me that advice and to like be able to look at him and like be like, you got this, like you can do this. Like you just, just keep going after it. Like gave, gave me some tips on the serves and returns and it was really helpful. And it helped me stay concentrated and stay within myself. And um, yeah, get me over that final hurdle. So I, um, yeah, just had to try to stay with it as much as I can. It's hard, you know, you've got the crowd supporting you and pushing you to, to close it out. And they wanted me to win so bad. Like I said, it's like playing in front of my, my best friends and I didn't want to let the crowd down. And I, I it was hard, Elena does not give up. And she just kept slinging those shots right and left. And I just had to hang in there. Well, there's, huh? a, there's a reason why it's a select few that are able to actually hold this yeah. trophy up and, uh, and you made it over all those hard moments. Danielle, when you reach a mountaintop like this, you know, you can't help but sometimes think back on the whole journey. 
growing yeah. up in tennis and your college years, which are so brilliant, the tough times through the career as well. What are some of those that, that pop up? Uh, it's been a roller coaster, <laughs> I have to say. And God, this match, I mean, it, you know, it was a long match, two hours out there and uh, not easy conditions. Um, you know, from going from a junior player, I mean, and taking the Greyhound bus in high school and the Amtrak trains, getting to tournaments, going to tournaments by myself at such a young age and 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 doing it because I really love it and, and because I love to compete and always challenge myself to do the best I can. And, you know, I, I'm so thankful for being able to do this for a living. I know how hard it is and the amount of effort that it takes and that, you know, to be able to kind of put everything together and be able to live out my dream. I, I consider myself so lucky and I, I'm just so grateful. I have put a lot of work into it and it's not easy. Um, but I've, I've had a lot of help along the way and people in my corner supporting me and it, it's, it's, you know, not easy. You, like I said earlier in the tournament, most of these weeks you, you don't lift a trophy and, and you lose sometimes more than you win. And um, to be able to stomach those highs and lows and to be able to stay sane and and to um, come back each week and show up. I have so much respect for the athletes that I I work with and, and play against because I know how freaking hard it is. And um, all of these women just are incredible on how they how resilient they are. And um, to be a part of this group, like I and people that have won this tournament and uh, it's really crazy playing in front of James and Andre Agassi today. I mean, I looked up to James so much as a kid. Um, Andre Agassi was my like return idol. I can't tell you how many, how much footage I watched of Andre standing inside the baseline, ripping returns um, to be out here and have that full circle moment. When I saw Andre was watching the match, I almost cheered up. I'm like, this is surreal. I used to watch this guy on TV as a kid and now I'm here and he's in the stands and heard his voice at one point. Like, you know, it's just, I mean, it's been a crazy, crazy ride. So I'm just so grateful. Tell you what, he would have been so proud of the way you struck the ball today. Um, as you sit on this mountaintop, I know you've done so much philanthropic work as well. You've, yeah. you've helped a lot of kids and, um, and you're, you're a true inspiration. So as you, as you sit here on this mountaintop, as, as the next generation, the children are watching you, what's, what's something that champion Danielle Collins would, would like to say to them? Oh, I, you know, I don't know. I, I there's a lot, I, I've learned a lot over my, uh, over my life, but to narrow it down to one thing is hard. And, you know, I think, I think the biggest thing for these junior players, um, and, and one of the things that can be a challenge for anybody at any level, whether you're a junior, whether you're a professional is trying to stay positive, no matter what it's hard. And there's days that are really challenging, but the more you can try to stay positive and keep have those positive thoughts and, to be your friend and to be your own friend on court. Um, this is a tough, tough sport. You don't get to play on a team as very often. I cherish my memories being on college team and, and weeks at Billie Jean King Cup. Uh, those are my favorite times. Um, and it is not easy uh, coming out here week to week. And I feel for the junior players going through those tournaments, going through those those uh, learning experiences and having to figure it out a lot on their own. So I just. Yeah, really be a friend to yourself. Be kind to yourself out there. The, I, I speak for all of us when I say we could not be any more happy for you. I know we're fortunate enough to have you for the rest of this year. But when you do go into that next phase, we wish you all the love and happiness in the world. Thank you. I appreciate it. Friendships that I've gotten to make over the course of my career, I could tear up talking about, I mean, the players, you, Steven, out like I, yeah, um, that's one of the most special things. And hopefully I'll get to, you know, talk about that in my book someday, right? I can't maybe gonna, wait. Can't maybe we're going to do a hard book launch now. <laughs> <laughs> After this? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the enjoy this. Have a great time tonight. And um, enjoy that pickleball tomorrow, too. I, yes. Hopefully I can go out there and kick some ass. <laughs> that's how we like to end a Danielle Collins interview.